All right, good morning and welcome back to Canvas to Canada. It is January the 30th, uh, 2018. I don't know if there's 31 days in this month. Um, my co-host is kind of big and fat, but this is this week's giveaway, um, this week's contest that we have in, I believe it's in the write-up, um, and we do have a web page being designed specifically for this, um, this campaign and this giveaway. So uh, that's important. Uh, the other part of it is um, I'd like to talk a little bit today about intellectual property, uh, a little bit about the understanding of working relationships, and maybe a little bit about the cannabis culture in general. As well, we're going to be covering breaking news and all that applies to cannabis in the country, Canada, and any questions, as always, are welcome in the chat, and we will uh, answer as best we can. And if we can't answer, we will get the answer. Um, that's what I, I, I like to like to say on the show. I'm not sure, um, one sec here, I've actually got, uh, if you're watching um, our webmaster, um, if it's possible, can you send me the link for the, uh, the giveaway? Because I'd rather share that around or show that page in my broadcaster so people can see what we're doing. Um, and again, we're tracking all this, the steps are up there, but we wanna make sure once it's on the website, there's no disputing the contest rules and what's expected to be done. And then, uh, as you guys know, we go through it all, check it all, through all the names in a hat. And on Sundays, 5 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time uh, show that we do every Sunday, uh, we will announce the winner and give out the winner. The only reason this has been repurposed is because the winner was in Australia that was watching our show the other night with Miss Jenny Hellum. If you haven't had a chance to see that, we've pin posted that video because Jenny Hellum, uh, I've also asked our webmaster just to change that show to, to read as a, uh, to read or to have Jenny Hellum's picture up there um, first for that night because of course she was a, she's an international rock star. Again, for me, I, I've done stuff where I take risks. But there, I've never stood up in front of a judge knowing that I'm facing 10 years and said, I'm not a criminal, go ahead and take it on. Go ahead and fight me. Um, that, because you know you're in the right, doesn't always mean courts are going to see it that way. And I think that's what made me uh, inspired. Ah, I just broke them, didn't I? I said that live. At least they didn't see that. So you guys couldn't see what I just broke, but I know what I just broke. I've been breaking stuff all morning. It's been one of those days. Saved one. Um, but Green Planet shot glasses. We give these out uh, in some of our giveaways, and they're, they're actually measuring glasses. Or not. They can be used for either or. If you're celebrating your crop and you, you enjoy a shot with your, with your crew, man. And uh, if you're measuring, then it has all the measurements right there. And this is for, your, again, your tank growers, your smaller growers that are doing smaller doses, or if you're mixing your own nutrients, um, doing different things. Do we have... Shit. Sorry guys, I'm doing two things at once and talking two things at once as always This is the trickiest part about the show um, It's trying to do two things at once Three things at once sometimes four things at once um, But you know what? It's also fun to be one of the few broadcasters that is actually running his own board uh, multiple camera angles and chat and Skype uh, I'm, 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 I'm happy to say I do that and it doesn't cost me hundred fifty thousand dollar overhead just cost me a lot of dedication, time, and conviction uh, to, to this. And, and I've been doing this 10 years, so what, what, that's what I was talking about, a little bit about past and, and present. You know, there's a lot of people that are, are upstarts right now in the cannabis culture, and I wish everybody all the best. It's the best thing it for us. I've been advocating for years for people to use cannabis, so my God, I love seeing all the new upstarts and the new starts to business. But one thing we have to remember is how we got here, the people that got us here, and most importantly, what we've all learned from myself and what I went through with Cannabis in Canada around intellectual property. Now, if it's your intellectual property and you've been doing it for 10 years, you need to protect that shit. I'm telling you now, type in CannabisCanada.ca and see who's writing off my work that I'm doing here today. Because every time somebody accidentally types Cannabis in Canada, they don't know the full extension, they get these guys. No, I can't name them because of legal reasons and lawyers being engaged, but I can know exactly what I can and can't say. And you can bet, motherfuckers, that I ain't going to stop calling you out until you stop writing off a sick and dying man's URL. 
And I know some of you may not fully understand that, but others can respect Cannabis in Canada for what we've done over the past 10 years, the multiple lives we've helped and the multiple people we've helped um, as a collective, including building a coalition that took down the government and allows us to grow today. That was birthed from Cannabis in Canada. So this is where I say providence, intellectual property, strength, conviction, this all matters, and respect. See, even me, when some of my friends crossed sides, I still showed respect. Phil Lucas is my mentor, he's the Vice President of Tilray, I still show respect. I respect the man for what he does and what he's done in the past and how he's got us here. And I think respect can go a long way. If we want to start building bridges and repairing bridges that have been damaged during the Allard and R.V. Smith legal wars that hurt everybody and the federal government's attempted MMPR policy, marijuana for medical purposes regulations, if that policy had to pass, there would be no growing in this country. Period. Not medical, and there'd be no such thing as non-medical non use of cannabis. They would have stuck to the term recreational because then you can still suggest recreational is medical. You see, the gov government, as usual, dumb butt fucked up by saying there's non-medical users of cannabis. I know I'm jumping around. I really don't care. This is one of those days where I'm sort of in a rant, sort of out of a rant. I'm only going to be on the air a short period of time here today before I head out. I'm going to head over to the island uh, for my island friends that are wondering. Uh, I'm going to head over there just to... Get some fresh air and, de and de clear my head. Um, yeah, and I got some filming to do for the Coalition documentary still. I'm behind on that. Um, I've got Mr. James Hudson coming by today who I'm going to speak to and I'm going to beg and plead that he helps me because he actually got, he, he birthed his career, I guess, doing documentaries. So um, having his, his, his insight and his, uh, his directional uh, even oversight, if possible, would, would be would be tremendous um, value to to the story of the coalition in the historical um, facts that, that that arise from it. Um, and and Neil, if you're tuned in today, I need to get you our lead plaintiff. Um, we have to get together and film. I'll come to your place. It's, we'll make it easy for you. Um, but we definitely will, we ought to get uh, the different plaintiffs. And uh, Mr. Tussaud, I know you're a busy man, but I will track you down and we will get your opinion. And you know you got to get in this documentary. You can't just have John in there. Um, you two are superstars of the community. So um, we got to have you both in the documentary. Ah, now, I just heard back from my webmaster, so the page isn't built yet for the Autopod giveaway. So I don't even have the steps in front of me. Let me look it up on my website. And uh, I'll switch camera angles here so you guys can see the other... Uh, there, you got, I'll sort of see the autopod here. Let me see if I can, eh, you can sort of see it. But you know what, most importantly, just go to Autopod USA. They have a cool video that shows, you can extend and extend, you can build on this. It starts with a basic one for your tent for a basic starter unit. And they're not as expensive as I thought. Maybe these units are only a couple hundred bucks or 300 bucks, I, mean, I thought it was over 500. But I might have been looking at a, a much bigger extended unit, like 10, 10 pails or larger pails. I'm not sure what I was looking at. Um, but uh, yeah, check out uh, Autopot USA and uh, look up, look for this here. What is this called? A complete growing kit. Just add plants, water, and yeah, and nutrients basically. So you can see here where there's a big line of them going down. Um, well, you guys can't see. So here we got the lines, feeder lines. So it's just like your typical hydroponics room. Some people will say, well, this is just standing hydroponics. Exactly. It's standing hydroponics without all the extra work. <laughs> That's all it is. It's for, the, it's, for the, it's for the beginner grower that wants to learn the fundamentals of hydroponics and running a rise <coughs> and the ease of feeding. So <coughs> if you're disabled, sorry, I'm still recovering from a cold. But um, if you're disabled and, 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 and feeding plants or getting into the plants is a little bit harder, sometimes it's easier to work with the res because then you only have to go into the, into the room you know, to thin out the leaves or you can get a helper to go in and thin out your leaves where applicable and pick off any yellowing leaves or, or thinning them out where applicable um, if you don't have the right air circulation, etc. I'm not going to get into the, the depths of that discussion. But this is how it starts, and, and as, as I've shown on the side, go to the website, please, um, autopot.usa. And in the description, um, which I said I was going to pull up, 
Man, that's good. I've been doing these uh, reclaim dabs. Vicky, ever since she taught me about freaking reclaim, I was just like, damn. All this time, I remember how many times I threw it out, the slabs and slabs and slabs I've done with the Beard Brothers and just throwing Reclaim out, just burning it and throwing it out. And all this time, I could have been redabbing it or putting it into into a capsule and eating it and for a sleeping pill or just eating it raw like Vicky does and you know using it for a sleeping pill. Just a lot to be said about not wasting your medicine. It's too valuable to us. We're medical patients. We're end users. And my God, if the government's going to charge you $20 a gram and you choose to go that route rather than get to know your neighborhood grower, well then, yeah. Where's the right up here? Uh, okay, steps. First off, uh, autopod giveaway steps. My daughter's done a full uh, right up here. So she's got the little emoji things that I don't even know how to do. They got the fingers pointing. So it tells you exactly what to do. Post to Facebook and Instagram one time. Now this goes all week, so you can do it anytime. You don't have to be even on the show, you know, to be able to do this. I mean, we're gonna use a number generator. The problem is, is that you will need to enter on this thread that you see here, because we're gonna pin post this. I think it already is. Yeah, it's pin posted now as the giveaway. And this will be up until Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Actually, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time will be the cutoff of the contest. So we have time to go through who did and didn't do the steps and who's qualified. Cut all their names up and have them all ready for the show at 5 o'clock. And uh, we'll do the giveaway at some point during that show using a number generator. So think of your favorite number. And instead of being between 1 and 100, due to the number of competitors that entered last time and the number of people that we have on our mailing list, I think it's only fair that we now move it up to between 1 and 1,000. Um, so you can pick any number between 1 and 1,000. And um, you don't have to be right on to win. It'll be the closest number will be the winner. I'm not going to keep going through these giveaways. We got way too much stuff to give away. We got way too much stuff to promote to keep dealing with autopods. I like this company, but I don't like doing giveaways more than twice. So, um, you know, that's uh, it's hard enough just doing it twice. In fact, sometimes there's two winners when you do that number generator because the winner comes on each side of the actual number and then you got to go give two prizes. But that's all good. That's why we got sponsors. So, um, anyway. Back to the steps. Step one, post to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So we've added Twitter into this one. Don't miss this. Using hashtags pound CNC, pound GP grown, which is green plant nutrients, pound PNW, which is for Pacific Northwest Garden Supply, multiple chain of stores here in British Columbia that serves hydroponic equipment for growing, pound autopot underscore USA, which is, of course, these guys who's Put that out there. Number two, you need to use the at GP grows, which is once again, Green Planet uh, grows, at PNW. And now this is on Instagram, I believe. I don't, I, do, does the at work on Facebook and Twitter? Sorry? Does the at work on Facebook and Twitter? I don't know these things. Uh, it, should. it should. If the at works, wherever you can use the at, um, it, it, most important that we see it used at least in one place twice um sorry uh, both of them used in one place either on uh i know you can use it on sorry on facebook and instagram i just don't know about twitter because i don't know how the at things i don't know all the stuff i'm learning as i go literally a lot of the stuff is new to me and on the fly and that's okay um the, we've been doing this for 10 years for free this hasn't been something we we sought to build into a company or an actual we didn't see legalization coming 10 years ago we were being criminalized, if you all remember. Anyway, you must also, step four, um, after that, sorry, you must, step three, you must like at uh, GP Grown page. Um, you must like the, the PNW Garden Supply page. So just uh, the Facebook pages, just click like. Um, and then subscribe to the Cannabis in Canada YouTube channel. So I know some of you are on Facebook and you're watching me there, but just pop over to YouTube. Punching Canvas in Canada or Jason Wilcox, you will get my channel. Uh, hit the subscribe button and then uh, register with CannabisInCanada.net. I sound, I know this sounds like a lot of steps, but I would remind people that we give away up to five thousand dollar gifts on this show. So every campaign will have similar steps. There will be a series of things that we ask people to do, but you have seven days to do it. So it's not like it all has to be done right now for this show. You have seven full days to do it. We'll be able to track it through SEO. Um, hashtags are all trackable. Um, 
and you must follow all five steps in order to participate in the giveaway. So if you do not use your full name, this is the problem we had at Christmas and I learned from it. We had five or six Johns and six or seven Sams and whatever that signed up with just their first names. If you sign up with only your first name, you will be disqualified. I don't care if you call yourself Lollipop Friggin' Dolly Bop. I don't care. Just give me a first and last name that I can register you under because I have your IP address and your email. That also matters because that's how I can just verify you're our legitimate winner. You'd be surprised at how many people watch this show and then try to email me and tell me they're the winner. Then I try and cross-reference the email with, with the person who they're trying to say they are and it's not them. In fact, there was five of them that tried to win the light. They tried to claim the light. They didn't do any of the steps. They didn't do anything. They thought we just wouldn't check. We're just a bunch of dumb stoners. Just want to say this so we're clear because that way I don't, I, 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 there's nothing, I, I feel bad even when I have to reject a winner because they didn't do the steps. They may, or maybe they signed up at Canvas Canada, but they didn't do the other steps. So I'm trying to make this as fair and as transparent as possible. Uh, after this week, I believe that there will be no more morning show um, five days a week. Uh, it's a little bit too taxing on myself and with the moving and shifting gears with the company, um, with the new stuff, there's, you're going to see Wilcox grows. We've got that, that now being built out. You're going to see a few different things uh, happening. Again, if you need grow equipment now, if you're looking to get a good deal on anything grow related, get a hold of me at jason at cannabisincanada.net or cannabisincanada at gmail.com and we can talk all that has to do with growing and any part that you may or may not need. So uh, that can start as of now. We're just in the process of doing over some paperwork and some other stuff that needs to be done um, before we launch the website and you guys will be able to go shopping for yourselves. So. Um, when it comes to these giveaways, um, Green Planet Nutrients and Pacific Northwest Garden Supply has agreed to do a monthly giveaway. So once a month, I will have something similar to this. It could go right up to $2,000. Just It's up to the company. But whatever they feel like promoting, we will promote. And you never know. We might just give a gorilla tent away on the show. It's not up to me. It's up to the friggin', it's up to the sponsors. So it's, it's highly suggestive to do these steps and get in the habit of doing these steps if you really want to participate in the giveaways. And I also, I'm not twisting your arm. If you don't want to participate, don't. But please, my friends, please respect the competition for those that do do all the steps because it really sucks when somebody lays claim to a win then gets disqualified and we have to repurpose it. That's why I said this time it's going to be the closest number you know, to the actual one and that's it. And if we have to repurpose it again, then we will. I, I'm not just going to keep going back the next closest number, next closest number. It just gets too confusing and uh, too awkward. So as I, as I said, I'm really hoping that everybody honors that. It, and it's in the chat too. It's on you guys in the chat to say, you know what? This ain't right. Fucking handle your shit right. You're not asked to do a lot. So, you know, if they screw up your competition, let them know. Hey, man, I didn't appreciate that. Send Canada's Canada a message on who the person is, and we may or may not ban them from the future shows so we don't have contests being interrupted with. Um, that, to me, matters more than anything. There's a lot of stuff I can deal with. Sorry, I just got a message from one of my administrators that's uh, keeping an eye on the chat. So uh, this is the other thing, uh, doing these shows, guys. If you're interested in working with Cannabis in Canada, uh, and again, especially if you live in the Lower Mainland, because now that we're switching out of my condo over to brick and mortar, it, it, it kind of matters more to uh, start looking at who do we want working with our team. And if you are not a transparent, integral, moral compass motherfucker, then do not apply. If you do not have compassion for patients and end cannabis users, and if you do not stand up, in, in opposition to the federal cannabis laws as stands, do not apply. We're not looking for your skills, we're looking for a team. Wow, what a morning. All right on, congrats, staff. I'm glad that, let people know in the chat that your, your prize is gonna arrive. You know, go ahead and show pictures. Let people see that when even on the most basic giveaways, that sometimes they're still not just basic. We don't just mail this and say, here's a giveaway from Green Planet Nutrients. 
It costs me $100 to mail that shit, and I'm on disability, man. Like I said, I don't have a big overhead because I'm a poor man. But we have sponsors. That's what makes us kind of look better than we actually are. Thank you to our sponsors, Pacific Northwest Garden Supply, Green Flat Nutrients, Beer Brothers Concentrate, and Karuna Health Foundation, um, Gorilla Tents, Geopots. And uh, we're working presently on, on working out a deal with Current Culture, but I will be promoting Current Culture. If you're not sure what that is, look up currentculture.com and you'll see it's sort of aeroponics, uh, deep water culture combination, really cool little four banger unit. How it will perform, I don't know. I've never grown with aeroponics. Um, it's gonna be new for me, so you're gonna see um, an experienced grower in a rookie environment. But the fundamental rules of climate control Feeding, pH, PPMs, none of that changes. All that changes is the equipment that I'm using. Oh, I gotta switch this camera angle back. I keep forgetting I got you guys on that shitty camera angle. Now, my daughter is actually researching GoPro. If you live in Vancouver and you know how to use a fucking GoPro, I spent $1,000 on this. I know it sounds funny, but I spent $1,000 on this and all the other gadgets that go with it. And there's a lot more things that go with it now. Um, you'll see here, I've got a book even, I'm trying to study this, a hero, uh, this is a Hero 4, it's not the 5, but it still shoots in 4K, it does stuff, but in the, in the two years I've had it, I haven't used it. I mean, I've got some footage with it, but I haven't used a goddamn single thing in, my, in, my, in, in any of it, so I thought, what would be more cool than a nice time-lapse video of a garden, you know, growing, moreover, a current culture garden growing from start to finish, and time-lapse that shit. And I can do that with the GoPro, but I've still got to learn it. I know some of you are like, just switch on the time lapse, Jason. And, and it is easy to some people. GoPro is not that hard to some people. I'm used to working with, check out, download Wirecast and try and run a, run a software broadcast and see how that works. And then you'll understand what I'm dealing with here. So it's, it's no excuses. It's just if you have any tips or tricks that will make it easier for me or, or uh, user-friendly uh, help files if you have it on and you know they have those help me files on YouTube um, I should probably start doing some of those actually but those help me files on YouTube um, are amazing for when you find the right one for for, for sorting this stuff out like this this thing with the GoPro sorry I'm just fixing my mic this thing about the GoPro that really bothers me is that though it seems like it can't capture sound if it's outside of its box it can most importantly is that I could be using it for amazing b-roll it shoots in amazing footage, but I don't know how to use it. It's just so, it looks like a little Chinese toy. It's hard to believe it costed, you know, literally a grand with all of its little tinkers and extra battery and charger and all that stuff. You know, it costed a grand. And then I look at my other cameras that I'm using and I'm presently using, and um, one costed a little over a grand, the other one's worth three grand. So, you know, you gotta look at, at how this stuff, how this stuff works out. So I think, okay, why am I not using my GoPro? I could have a third angle camera, I could have something for on the road, and I need to implement it. See, I'm not a cameraman, I'm, I'm kind of an all around man at this point, so I gotta, I gotta do the editing, the camera work, and the, the board work, kind of the all around work, but it's also fun to learn it all. It's just, it's time we bring in the professionals. As you see, we brought in professional SEO, we brought in professional website. It's time we bring in the professional editors. It's time we start to hire the professional people that are applicable. We don't want to be 710 Studios. We're not aiming to be fancy dancy, look at us, we're all fucking dicky 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 dicky. No, we want content. We want educational content that actually helps people. That's what we're aiming to do. And yes, I will take a shot at those studios. Um, and Jeremiah, I look forward to seeing you Friday. And to all of our other friends down at Pot TV location. Canvas Culture, East Hastings. Where it all began and where it may all end. You know, this culture has come a long way in 20 years. We have seen a lot. And a lot of us have come back around. I'm looking forward to the mom cop and talking to some other people because a lot of us have seen so much and been through so much, had our minds twisted up by people. And as I said, people come and go. It's easy to, to come up in the activist arena. It's hard to stay up here because that means your integral value and your moral compass needs to be somewhere in check. You can be the biggest asshole in the world as long as you're telling the truth in the process. It's when you're running off conjecture, lies, speculation, and character assassinations and slander. When you get into that stuff, then you're getting into the negative side. So again, it's that, it's that balance of, 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 the, of the internet. 
literally like it's the balance of the internet and and that's what's funny about where we are in this present day and time you know we're in a different place uh with the internet and uh it's allowed us to have keyboard warriors if you have it, it allowed uh allowed people to literally i mean recently we've seen a restraining order put on one lady that was able to she used to work for a senator and she could write real good but she was absolutely nuts and she caused a lot of problems for the coalition myself and for mr conroy and luckily the courts agreed and they they stopped her within their powers and that's unfortunate that while we fight the policies that be that we have patients trying to attack our own attorneys and the very people fighting the powers that be so it doesn't always add up I know this morning is not really a topic driven show it's not meant to be it's a morning show and it's also why I'm trying to decide on whether I want to keep it going. I've watched our numbers grow on YouTube and my friends around the world. You've Please check out the Jenny Helen video. Then you'll see how international this really is. I love my sister Jenny because you know why? She speaks like I do. She sounds like I did back 10 years ago trying to tell Canada, look guys, they're coming. Most of cannabis in Labatt's cannabis is coming. That's the people that make our beer here. If you're wondering, if you're watching overseas or, or in America, that's just who makes our beer here. So I used to say like these big corporations that, you know, just like the ones that control alcohol are going to control cannabis. And well, looky, looky, who controls cannabis? The Liquor Control Board or the Gaming Commission. I called this shit in 2012. Show after show after show, document after document, newspaper clipping after newspaper clipping. And finally, at least I can say this country is sort of on the same page. We've got activists from Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia, fucking hats off to you for allowing four plants per home. Thank God. If you need tents, hit me up. I can get you probably a better deal than you can get in your own region. And um, let's just see what can happen. But if you want tents, if you want to get growing, get in touch with me. Nova Scotia, it's going to be awesome. I'm hoping that other provinces recognize and see the importance of allowing a free and democratic peoples to have access to this harmless plant that has never killed anybody, has no lethal death dose. And again, if we want to attribute it to addiction, we have to look at its equal, which is caffeine. And I don't see us pulling all the fucking Coke and ginger ale off the goddamn shelves in the stores to protect the kids. So, Mr. Government, please stop Save with the Kids Pro campaign. And please stop suggesting that there's medical and non-medical use of cannabis. Everybody has an endogenous system. Everybody uses endocannabinoids and your body uses it medicinally. And you're going against science, logic, and reality. In favor of Reefer Madness 2.0 and profit-driven policy that I choose to report on and push back against until such time as this country can grow freely and access cannabis freely in a free and democratic manner. Whew! A fuck's awake this morning. I'm waking the fuck up now. I can tell you that much. I got to get into the chat, see where you guys are at. Um, let me just check YouTube. I can check that a little bit faster. I can check anything. Um, maybe we're not broadcasting to YouTube. Yeah, I know. It's weird. Maybe I have to reset it. It says I'm live, but it doesn't show a picture. And there's no chat. Please, while we try to reconnect you, unable to connect, please try again later. Oh, you know what? It's probably just me. To my friends on YouTube, it's probably just me. I've got a lot loaded up in my computer, and I can see it's just spinning here. Yeah, I can see a lot there. Yeah, no, it's just my computer. I can, I can already tell by the way it's acting. It's I've got too much... You'd be surprised at how much computing power goes into this, but I still, one of my upgrades is definitely going to be a, uh, a couple of lights and uh, definitely a more powerful computer. And I think I'm gonna have to switch over to Apple because it seems Apple is the industry standard for, for the stuff that we do. Oh, that's good coffee. It's hard having the coffee. Anyway, hopefully you guys are having a better morning than I am. I'm just getting into the YouTube chat now. Check in with my friends all around the world. And my friends, Casper Leach, time for hemp. Any of you that know I'm out of Portland, Oregon. I plan to be there this summer. Not sure when I'm more in the fall. And my friends, oh, Casper let me turn Leach, this off here. Damn it. Shut up. Portland, Shut up. Get the volume. 
Oh, yeah, sorry for the feedback. All right. So for my friends on YouTube, if you're in America, 39% of our viewers are in America. I said it was over 55%. The, the demographics change weekly. But trust me, we may be called Cannabis in Canada, but I can tell you now we'll be reporting on the international cannabis cartel. And uh, they're really a corpse cartel. They're a cartel of corporations, so they're not an illegal cartel, but they're, they're using illegal tactics and manipulation and politicians to do what, in essence, is conspiracy-driven policy. I just can't prove it. So I'm, I don't want to be Alex Jones, and I'm not going to be. I'm going to stick to non-satire and stick to the facts that I know and I can prove. And what I can prove right now is that we're serving six other countries. I can prove that what I said in 2012, that this is nothing more than hijacking and cornering the market so that they can take over supply and distribution, has come to fruition. I said that if we won an alert, it would set constitutional precedents for everybody to grow in this country. That's come to fruition. Only not everybody's getting to grow because of the government. But one to four plants is in the Cannabis Act per home for all of Canada. And then we got this privacy case. I got to be careful what I say on it because I got a call from my lawyers who wanted me to be a little careful. So I need to be a little careful to, to make Canada happy. Canada, you're the fucking defendant. Stop crying. I can say what I want this way because this is my personal fucking opinion. Stop crying. Nobody's saying anything about your damn case. Nobody knows anything because we're not actually in your fucking negotiations or your talks or your trials or whatever the fuck it is you're doing. That being said, because you're watching us and you need to need to, <laughs> to call up our attorneys and, and, and suggest that we're giving misinformation, well, then we'll just point you guys back to our attorneys and uh, allow you to go there because when the day comes out and you guys all get a paycheck, and uh, for my friends around the world, I filed a privacy case here on behalf of 41,000 patients whose privacy was breached by the federal government of Canada, and it's a four-year-old case that's been certified, and the privacy commissioner, the federal privacy commissioner of Canada, said it was a gross violation of uh, privacy of the medical patients of Canada. So we're just waiting for this case to finish out, and I can't say any more about the details because I've got shit, rightfully so. Because Canada's being a baby as usual, saying wah, 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 it was a clerical error, wah, 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 there's people talking about this case, doing anything they can to not take accountability for breaching our privacy. Mr. Government, do what's right, settle this, get it over with. But then again, look what you did now. You have to pay us $780,000. Moreover, our lawyers, $780,000. Because you dumb butt fucked up again. And now you go and you've done some stupid policy that suggests that there's non-medical and medical use of cannabis. And in Allard, we prove that all use of cannabis is medical. Because of the endogenous system. The, the endocannabinoid system. If anybody online disagrees, please let me know why. If you feel you're a non-medical user, please explain to me how. Based on science and biology, and based on the endocannabinoid system, I would love it from anybody. Because that's how we shut them down. Facts, leadership, and education. People, power, and some fucking cojones to take on the government. Because I tell you, they threaten your life, they threaten your business, they fuck with your shit. And it's not just the government. In this case, I want to actually build bridges with some of the LPs. Because not all 88 of them are bad. Holy shit. Hey, Scott, I don't got you on speakerphone here, but I'm live on the air. Can I give you a call back just when I'm off? Yeah, sorry, bro. I really want to... I mean, we've been playing phone tag, but I just... I. Fabulous. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Everybody, that was Mr. Scott Wilkins. If you need insurance of any sort, that's the man to get a hold of. He's a man of men that needs to, that is able to help out with different situations. Most importantly, he understands the demographics of what's going on in this country. Many of us do. Most importantly, what's going on around the world. And I see that some of the, the, the comments on YouTube. <coughs> I love our American audience. You guys are awesome. Because you guys, I, I see Oregon, like, again, going back to Casper Leach. He's going to be doing some crossover work with Canvas in Canada here because, like, like in Canada, sponsors start to drop off of us smaller shows because we got the balls to come out and 
smoke weed and talk about weed when other people won't do it. Now that there's a thousand people doing it with big money backers, then it's all about the glitz and the glamour. But I'll remind you, you can put up glitz and glamour all you want. It's just like a woman. You can dress her up as much as you want. She can still be a retard underneath. Beauty is only in the eye of the beholder. You need to look past the beauty and what it is. And that's what I mean about these shows is content. Sure, it's a fancy website. Amazing editing. Fucking cool. But are they engaging you in the chat? Are they actually providing you with content that's relevant to present day situation? Or are they just simply trying to get money off you to fucking be on their show? Yeah, I'm calling you bitches out. In a positive way. <laughs> just in a positive way. That's all I can say. Um, time will tell all truths. It's my hashtag. I came up with it and I'm going to keep using it. Time tells all truths. It's continuing to do so now. It'll continue to do so in the future. And Canada will then know the truth. I think time's already showing truth to many people. Real recognizes real and time shows real. It's unfortunate when you mentor people and show people how to do things and they take that and they abuse it. They even try to use it against you, which is even funnier. And like my previous business partner, some of them even try to become you because they're rich and they can buy it. I'm not a teddy bear, you can't buy me. You can't buy my brains. I'm not for sale. I'll sign a contract with any company that wants to fucking hire me for the right amount of money, but right now, I'm just a guy with fucking basic brains. That being said, I'm the same guy that kept cannabis in Canada. Check it out in Corporations Canada, who actually owns the company, and then ask yourself, why would a very rich, powerful company with all the glitz and glamour I'm talking about Americans at that with American license plate, why would they why would they want to keep riding off a of sick and dying man's URL? Why would they want to put studios right above Pot TV? Their own studios right above Pot TV. You guys know predatory action if you work in business. So if you're a hydroponic store and they set up right across the street from you, that's predatory action. You're likely that store across the street's likely not going to get served by some of the larger nutrient companies. It's not much different in media. <laughs> and, and I tell you now, if I had, a, if I had my own moody, new media studio in one place, I'd be concerned about why these guys moved in upstairs, started their own studio, and took one of my own recruits. Now, I'm looking forward to appearing on Jeremiah's show on Friday night. Anybody interested in coming to Pod TV to speak to me, I'm wide, wide open and available Friday night. I believe his show starts at 4. So Vicky and I or myself will be there in attendance. That's one of the most important parts because we're trying to let people know where, they, where we're going to be and where they can find us. Because um, people are saying, we don't know where you guys are or where you're going to be. After that, we'll be at the Mom Cop. And that's where you'll be able to find us. I think, is that the battery on this camera? Oh, you're, I'm sorry. I was like, how the hell did the battery die so fast? That'd be a first. Um, We're doing great this week too. Great this week too, guys. Um, today's only Wednesday, and uh, we've reached about twenty thousand people. So hey, congrats, good job. Um, you guys are sharing around. You guys are, are getting that message out. And if we're if our organic reach again, I don't bot my channel. I don't buy shit. You want to know how to check the true stats on 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 most videos? It's usually the fifteen percent rule. There should be fifteen percent likes to comments. Or sorry, likes to views. And there should be 15% comments to views. So if you have 5 million views, you should have 1.5 million comments and likes. Real recognize is real. I won't bot my shit. At least you know I'm real. And these are real people and organic numbers that have grown. And, and that's important. In this modern day of buying your, buying your way up, um, False advertising is it's the only way I can put it. I come from a place where this was never about money, it was about education. So doing anything uh, uh, falsified or misleading or satire just seems wrong. It just seems wrong. I don't know how else I can put it, but it's wrong. So, shit. 
Oh, I'm all over the place here this morning. Let me try and find a video. I got to get a dab into me. I think that's what my fucking my problem is here as we continue with. Uh, I wonder if this will play for me today because yesterday it wanted to be a prick. I wanted to show you guys um, Australia. I don't know. We'll see. It's a marijuana thriller set in the, the world of cannabis. I don't know if we've had a noir thriller before set in that world. The fact that that's quasi-legal, that's the unsettling water. He just killed Frank. <laughs> what kind of detective stakes out a house with a murder going on inside? It is legal, but it's kind of, yeah, maybe not. If you get into trouble, then you need a piece. Come to see me. Peace? It is legal. Yeah, it's legal. It's legal. Just, you know, it's in case anything happens, you know. When I split from Chung, I wanted to establish a separate identity, and anything that didn't have a joint in it, I would do, you know. <laughs> and so I started, did a lot of stuff with them. Now I'm kind of at farther down that line. I've established my individual persona, and I can do whatever comes up. This was an interesting project, you know. And, was, and the check cleared. What's my username? Italian Stallion 69. Of course, it's your Italian. Italian stallion? Yeah. What's yours? I don't have one yet. These phones are new. What about yours? Latin heat. Latin heat? Italian heat. Oh, no. <laughs> it's Italian heat. Okay, cut. This is a marijuana movie, and we filmed in real grow ops, real hydroponic stores. Everything in the movie's been authentic, so it seemed apropos to do the interviews here, and we thought we might be able to score some And free they give us free weed at the end. I need you to do me a favor and fire this back up for one more crop. This is the last crop, man. I'm cutting it tomorrow, you know that. I know, but I'm in a jam. Zach lost all the weed. I had to grease a lot of palms and blind, literally blindfold actors to bring them into these kinds of places to film. Some of them freaked the shit out of them. Right there, right there, hands! Hands in the air, hands in the air! Well, I understand this character very well, because he is very he's empathetic, you know, you kind of this stuff goes completely legal. You're going to be the position he's in, trying to give advice. I get the fuck out of here, start a new business with a better class of people. Away from people like you and me. Far away. OK. No rolling, yeah, guys. Up. Set. I grew up watching all of Cheech's movies. See Cheech as more of a mature, serious, dramatic actor. I had a feeling mm -hmm. he was the guy that would fit into the film and not thinking about him as as a comedic icon. Maybe right before he croaks. <laughs> Darkharvestmovie.com is the best hub for finding out where you can see the movie, but in general. Comcast, it'll be on Comcast. Comcast. Uh, uh, DirecTV. Right. <laughs> and, he's, um, he's not a yes. Okay, uh, DirecTV. Am uh, Amazon. Yeah. Uh, iTunes. Um, where else can you see it? Uh, Your house. Is that my house coming over? Um, uh, you got the secret stash there? Yeah, yeah. And any place that has electricity, <laughs> hone in on that. They'll have the internet, everything will be fine. Darkharvestmovie.com. Darkharvestmovie.com. Yes. Yeah, it's some shit. Start a new business with a better class of people. Away from people like you and me. Far away. This is the last crop, man.
I got that first transition perfect. Holy fuck, that's hard. That's like six steps. Bam, 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 bam. You have to do six things. Turn your mics on, do the transitions, and get back on the show. But you know what? This is fun as hell learning to do this myself. It's like playing the ukulele, juggling, and somehow skateboarding at the same time. Um, it'd be impossible. So often this is hard to get perfect transitions. So I'm actually happy with that one. I like it. And uh, for people wondering about the, these shirts, these are what we've been giving away. Every person that got a giveaway last week got one of these shirts. Um, or one of the psychedelic shirts that are by Green Planet. So, um, yeah, thank you for the compliments on it, but they're the Green Planet shirts and they're what we give away. We still have another, I think, nine or so to give away. And, um, okay, let me get back into the chat. Um, now our farmer's market that got hit here recently, I've been trying to pull somebody on from Skype through that wants to come on and talk about it. Um, a lot of people, were, and rightfully so, I guess they don't want to talk about it. And you know, it's funny how many people cheer, the, cheer on our rock stars, our real hardcore fighters. They cheer them on. Yeah, we got your back, man. We got your back. But they never, never sell a bag themselves. And once they get raided, they say, we're going to protest, we're going to get you back. I went down by the art gallery the other day. I've not seen anybody. So I'm just curious if somebody from the farmer's market would like to come on the show and explain to us what's going on so we can keep the world updated as to what they're doing to our peoples. Especially in the province that leads the world, BC Bud. I'm going to get back into the chat here. Um, but that uh, interview was with Cheech Marin and JC or uh, AC Peterson and um, James Hudson. Now James Hudson, he wrote, produced, and directed Dark Harvest, and I'm, I'm looking forward. Honestly, he's coming over for for some coffee and and some chats this morning. I'm really looking forward to it because I've been working hard on this coalition documentary, and I'm no freaking producer. You know, I, I'm just a, a show host. I'm I'm, more, I'm probably one of the most more raw show hosts. Uh, you know, I can tend to rant. I can tend to roar. But you know what? I'm real as real gets, and I, at least I won't lie to you. I won't. I won't put satire up, and and I won't try and flatten your tires. I'll try and protect you from, from, from getting that flat tire if you have it in parables. Um, thank you, Justin. Uh, CNC gear will be available on the Cannabis Canada website um, soon enough. It'll actually be a, more available through uh, Wilcox Grows. It's just the way we have to do our businesses. Businesses have to be legally run certain ways and accounting and everything else. So I'm not sure <coughs> how it'll look, but there will be a link off of the CNC website uh, where you can order CNC gear um, from sweaters to hats to shirts to um, Green Planet's also got a line of gear coming out that we'll also be promoting. So um, in any of your growing needs, I mean anything from a quarter inch pipe to an eight inch wire, you need it, I got it, and I can get it for you. I can't guarantee you I can beat every other salesman in the country, but I can guarantee you I can come close. And so can my team. And as our team builds, so will this nation of growers in Canada. As we come out from behind the tomato plants, as we begin to continue to grow, and most importantly, for those that choose to do so and don't have access anywhere else or can't grow, well, then we need to make sure they got the most affordable and reasonable licensed producer out there. And when I find out who that one is, I'll start to endorse them. I can't endorse them right now. I haven't got somebody I can endorse. Even though Phil Lucas is the mentor, my mentor and vice president of Tilray, I still can't endorse any one LP. I've never tried LP cannabis. I'm not gonna shoot it down. I'm not gonna lift it up. I've tried Prairie Plant Systems cannabis and you guys can Google my name in the Globe and Mail and how I took on Mr. Brett Settle, the first ever licensed producer in Canada and took him on personally on the national committee and in the Globe and Mail and refused to pay any money for his Millhouse gamma radiated process crap. He was trying to sell for $150 an ounce to patients. You could get a $50 ounce off the street better than what Prairie Plant Systems was serving. Not to mention in RV Baron with Dr. Hornby and the Green Cross, we proved there was more hard metal contaminants in the Prairie Plant Systems weed than there was in the weed being grown by the defendant, Matt Barron. You guys might know him as the house of the great gardener. See, that's how far I go back. 20 years takes you a long fucking way in this industry. <laughs> a 
long way. Um, I gotta plug my phone in here. Where am I at on this show anyway? I wasn't gonna go longer today, but at the same time, our, 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 you know, I would really like you guys on the show survey to let me know what your thoughts are. Um, I got content for days, and, and if my sponsors, I, I need to speak to a couple of them, if they suggest that the five days a week, and once we're in brick and mortar, it'll be different, because then I can get up early, I can have my coffee, I can get ready for my show, I can go over my show notes, and I can do proper interviews, um, and, uh, and bring proper educational seminars, etc. cetera, um, that may be applicable. Uh, but really, I'd like to hear from my, from my, uh, from my audience, and the people that enjoy this chat and enjoy this morning time. Would you like to see the morning show continue? And I mean in reality, because it's very taxing on our company, it's very taxing on myself, and moreover, my daughter. And we have to get up every morning, and Vicky as well, get up every morning, try and be in the chat, try and engage people. Um, it, it's a lot. And though it's a hobby, I don't mind doing it once or twice a week, but it gets a little taxing every day. But at the same time, I'm noticing that we're getting our voice out. YouTube's growing. Some of my YouTube fans are coming back because they're realizing now that that what was going on in Canada isn't just a Canada issue. It's an international issue. And if I can be a catalyst in any way to help, I'll, I'm there to do it. When the documentary comes out on the coalition and the book comes out on the coalition, people can read for themselves how we did it. Because the lawyers themselves will sign off on these books and on this documentary. So that you know that what's said in there is legally and factually true. Aside from they can't speak to the coalition, I guess. They won't be able to speak to how we fundraise or anything else because technically that's illegal. So <laughs> they can't speak to that. Um, you know, uh, that part, they, they did their work in the courtroom. The plaintiffs did their work in the courtroom. And the coalition did their job fundraising and funding the case. Everybody else were spectators. Sort of like watching a football game. I used to use that analogy. You know the guys up in the nosebleed seats? Those guys that say, hey, quarterback, you could have, would have, should have done it this way. But they never get on the field and take a hit for them team. They never actually take a hit themselves. Just suck back their beers and fucking tell people could have, would have, should have done it this way. Or could have, would have, should have, should just beat it. Find their own group with the could have, would have, should have. And, and talk about how you could have, would have, should have done everything. And never do anything rather than fucking with people that actually are. <laughs> I'm all over the place today, I know, guys. Um, oh, no, not $56 an ounce. Uh, well, that might be what it costs you to grow sub. I don't know, for me, um, if it's LED, it's about it, <coughs> a 400 watt LED, <coughs> you know, five by five foot tent. At 1.2 pounds, I think with the equation worked out to one or 15 cents a gram or 16 cents a gram. And then with high intensity discharge lamps in the same situation, can pull about two pounds of, uh, in that same area with one light. And that's about $1.50 a gram. That's what we can grow for ourselves. So I, be I beg anybody to show me why we shouldn't at least get to know a family member that grows, your neighborhood grower, and God damn it, Capacha Club should be allowed to continue in this country. They're a nonprofit, and if the Nonprofit Act does its job and investigates nonprofits that aren't actually nonprofits, then they can deal with them because I believe a nonprofit can help people get off fentanyl, get off drugs that is leading to this fentanyl deaths in BC. I'm tired. I'm tired of the ambulance coming to my building and taking out dead bodies because they OD'd. The, the doctors in, in British Columbia, in this country, they're taking everybody off pills like crazy and they're, then they're going to the street and they have no choice. They don't know any better. They come home, they kill themselves. And we're here trying to save the kids from cannabis. You want real and raw? There's real and raw. I have an 18 year old daughter. I, I thank God every day she doesn't do drugs and she doesn't drink. Yeah, there's a big future to be held for Canada. And we need to decide what we want for our country. Yeah, we lost uh, we lost one of our, our good friends over the holidays, actually. I took uh, took one of my one of my bros out for dinner. See I, I'm used to losing friends when I was younger. I was involved in a lot of stupid shit and um, attending funerals was 
know, as part of the business. But now, seeing these people die from fentanyl, which I don't even know what the fuck it is. I just know that some of the fentanyl in the streets of Vancouver is used for elephants to, to, to put them to sleep. A fucking elephant, not a person. And we wonder why people are dying. It, it, not to mention the drug problem in British Columbia was the worst to begin with. Downtown East Side is the worst neighborhood in all of Vancouver and all of Canada. It is the worst. Four blocks, possibly in North America. I don't know, I've been to California. I've seen some pretty tough, tough areas of California. So I, I would say for Canada, it's definitely one of the worst. Then you add all these deaths. Now I remember when China white heroin hit the streets here in BC and we had all the deaths. Only back then we didn't know what we know about cannabis and getting people off pills and getting people, again, these pills are leading to the fentanyl. Doctors are taking people off pain pills, people go to the street to get pain pills and eventually find their way to heroin and or pill form of fentanyl. And then we, we watch them die and we watch the, power, the powers that be write profit-driven policy that would permit saving the kids and locking up cannabis growers like myself for helping people while allowing our most weakest and sickest to die in our streets. Now that we've determined that addiction, drug use is a medical issue, we need to treat it as such. It's a harm reduction issue. And it's not a criminal issue. So just letting them die is not a fix. I don't know how else I can word this because usually I don't advocate in this area. I used to. Like I'm one of the founders of Drug War Survivors. If you guys down the east side know Drug War Survivors, I'm one of the founding board members. Ann Livingston is a friend of mine. My reach into the downtown east side is deep. But so is the pain. Only now, these people are dying next door because they're in subsidized housing, they're poor, they have not the best lives. But I know they're not killing themselves. So Canada, you wanna get real? Canadian activists, advocates, you wanna get real? Though we may not use street drugs ourselves, though we may, it may not have to do with the cannabis culture per se, I believe cannabis can help save the day and getting those people off those drugs and preventing those deaths. If the government would just fucking stay out of the way and allow the market to dictate itself, by your own admission, Health Canada, there's no medical value to cannabis in this country. It needs further exploration. I don't know. I don't know what's going to stop this or what's going to change this because my show can only do so much. You know, I reach about 40 people live on the air that watch between YouTube and Facebook. That's not a lot. So I have about 40 people watching me on a live show. But that matters because those 40 people know five people they're going to share the message with. So that matters to me. But then about 1,000 people watch it in a day. That's on average. That's okay. Not a huge reach. And then we knew another couple hundred on YouTube. So about 1,200 people a day get my message. It's a start. But I would remind you of the millions that exist in Canada. In fact, there's, there's, there's an estimated one million medical users of cannabis alone. Now there's all the non-medical users, recreational users, non-medical. You don't have an endocannabinoid system. I know I sound like I'm jumping all over the place, but it is the real. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, uh, to jumping off this and I got one minute left. So um, I'm gonna be closing the show out here. If there are any questions in the chat, I've just kind of jumped on here. I don't know, I, I didn't even see the responses. Do we get responses around keeping the show going, um, the morning show? Cause it's just, go ahead. No, no, I'm looking. Everybody's chatting, having their- No, but the, about the morning show, keeping it going, I was just looking for feedback on keeping this, the morning show going because it is taxing again it's not it's not super taxing but it's enough to to get up redo all your stuff and um yeah i'm just looking for feedback from the uh uh from the people that actually watch the show um 
my daughter is getting a life lesson in this, so that helps in that respect. We're all getting experience. 130 a zip distillate, 50 bucks for a syringe, one gram. Um, 50, 50 bucks for a syringe, one gram, that must be American. That's not Canadian prices. Did you say $100 for an a zip, an ounce of distillate? Um, for, for the record, this is on YouTube, not on Facebook. Actually, I gotta be careful what I say because I'm doing broadcasting. Um, damn rules. Um, but yeah. No, people are saying love the morning knowledge, love the morning show. Thank you so much for the love and support, guys. Uh, guys, honestly, then, it, if you, if you want to see the, the morning show keep going, please let me know. Um, you know, you can easily send me a PM. I don't need to, you to point post out in public. I just want to know that there's a base out there that it's there worth is. it's worth my time getting up in the morning and coming out and sharing with you. I've got 20 years in this industry and we're about to leave lives. And I fought for liberty, freedom, and a free and fair market. And now that the whole country is on the same page, I think it's time that we do this. And most importantly, internationally, my friends, I didn't get flown to Australia for no reason. I didn't head over to California to speak for no reason. It's because other activists in other countries can already see what's going on around the world. This is not a Canadian legalization issue. This is an international issue. In America, don't think Jeff Sessions or Trump is gonna stop you from legalizing. They're already invested in all this shit. You just gotta follow the money. It's all smoke and mirrors. I'll just point one thing out to you. Where is the International Cannabis Business Conference being held? Oh, that's right, sorry, San Francisco. Where was it last? I think it was Germany, wasn't it? International. I think this is where we need to recognize that if the world's going to legalize, what are we going to do? And I've off members are all saying the same thing it's totally up to us so <laughs> for our family they're saying you know what do what's best for you and your girls um yeah you know what you have a lot of caring loving people in this committee like yeah loving 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 members thank you so much so i decided i would share that love with you because you know what there's a whole lot of love coming back to our family and that's nice too. and that uh that means a lot it really does because um I can tell you now, it's not been easy watching other companies, one, fight, fight, fight for this company um, to keep it going on principle alone, just because I'm Irish and some of my friends operate on principle. So on principle alone, I kept my company, but it was very hard at this point because I look around and I see, like, man, there's like 50 companies, but then I, I try and watch and see what's their content level at. And they were either, either over-marketing, under-marketing, or they just ain't got a base. And what I'm trying to find out is I've been doing this for 10 years. There's no donate button on my page. I ain't looking for your money. I'm just looking to share information and get information from you guys. I mean, finally, we got this live chat. So doing this show every morning, and believe me, it's not, it's not that it hasn't paid off. I've had some really big offers. I've turned them all down so far. Like really big offers. I want to make sure the team that I work with is going to be a long-term team and is going to be there for my daughter when I'm gone. I'm 25 years HIV positive. I got to re recognize real. I've been taking toxic medications for 25 years, destroying my organs. So securing this company and getting it off the ground, doing it right is fundamental to me. People may have thought the coalition was my baby. The coalition was a, su a successful project, but it was not my baby. This is my baby. So if you guys want to keep this show, see the show keep going, please let me know. Let's keep it, let's keep it, let's keep it popping, and let's uh, let's figure out uh, let's figure out what the best way to to address some of the stuff that's going on in California, San Francisco. Like as I, as I said, San Francisco, I believe, is in California. But you guys, it's sorry, it is yeah. So. San Francisco Good morning, uh, Luke. Luke Moe is one of our winners that won a Spectrum King, 400 watt, which is actually the light that I'm hanging as soon as I'm off the show. Um, I plan on hanging this light. I got a phone call to make and then I plan on hanging back up the Spectrum King um, just because there's different things. You can hang up a Spectrum King, you can hang up different lights. You want to see how do they perform with their diodes. And I'm not into saying anything more or different other than that part. And we'll be bringing you, uh, most importantly, I want to have the right light for the deep water culture system. I don't want the plants looking funny for any reason. So, um, 
that's a, the, the biggest part. So anyway, that part will come to you guys. I'm looking at both chats right now. Uh, thank you, Lou, or Luke. Um, my friends, Luke is way on the East Coast, and, and, and on the 12 days of Christmas, we gave away $10,000 in grow equipment to various people around North America. And there are only a few people like Chris Best and Luke and a few others that have, like Iman and others that have won. Thomas has won on our show. Um, Evelyn's won on our show. A lot of different people have won on our show. I think Evelyn's won anyway. Um, a lot of different people have won on our show. Everything from $2,000 lights down to a few t-shirts and, and whatever the mailman sticks in there that sometimes is weird. You know, people say, hey man, how'd this get in there? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Fucking mailman. It's almost like Santa Claus cannabis mailman is out there. It's kind of cool. So. Thanks, Kathleen. I, I try to I try to do this for one purpose is to try to again. This is what's funny. You mentioned that because I was offered to come out to California for an interview to actually teach with a school, and then somebody else asked me what what I thought about all these online seminars and all these all these things. I'm like, I already do this for free. So I get that people want to make money, and I get that money needs to be made, but there's. There's information that's worth money, and then there's just information that should be free to the people. Especially if you're going to legalize and say, go ahead and grow, but don't burn your house down. Well, why don't you just give them a book on how to do so? That's why I started my video. That's why I did 450 grow videos. Teach people how to do it safely, do it right, use different methodologies. And most importantly, God damn it, let's overgrow. You see, there's my brother in arms, if you have it, Dana Larson who said overgrow Canada. I say Allard overgrew Canada. Legalization task force overgrew Canada. Cannabis Act of Canada overgrew Canada. Now it's up to the people to plant the seeds, put up your tents, open up your basements and grow. Then we can say we overgrew Canada. Not overgrow, overgrew. Past tense. Let's make it happen. And let's set an example for our American brothers and sisters who need to federally legalize still, for our other Commonwealth countries around the world that share similar liberties that we have and freedoms. If you're a free and democratic person and you respect the right to liberty and everybody's right to liberty, then you'll get behind this initiative, this mission to change any policy that suggests that there's non-medical use of cannabis and any policy that suggests that they need to block home growing because it's dangerous. It's really profit-driven policy to make more money for the big guy and to just shit on the little guy and force them to be back on pharmaceuticals when they or be modern-day moonshiners and face jail time. And that's just not right. There's, there's no right or wrong. In fact, I'm going to put this up here just to give you guys an idea because I, I, I've had a few comments. People forget that I'm a grower, first and foremost. I became an activist when they decided to fucking take my goddamn grow. I started growing and should teaching people how to grow because they weren't teaching them to do so. So the real fight started in 2010, which is this video. The police came, they cut down eight, no, was it eight or 12 of my, 12 of my plants. And I sued them for, it was $8,000 I sued them for that we settled for out of court settlement. But I, I, I would, Ramo, you guys know him as an urban grower, they wanted him to rip his video down and for me to rip my videos down that we're talking about their police's fucking blunder. And we refused. I'd rather go to court than tear my fucking video down. Principle, my friends, principle is everything. Check it out, Jason Mocox versus the police. It's still up there. Their officer's still up there. And you can see them admitting to what they did wrong and that's exactly what you do if you run into that situation. You don't call cursing and swearing and get yourself arrested. You ask them to come back, send an officer, you break out your video camera and you film them admitting to cutting down your plants. Hand that shit over to a lawyer and sue them. That started off the initiation of the coalition because what happened is, is, is a couple years after that, after I finally did that, you're going to see in this video, within six months after winning an out-of-court settlement, they sent this green team to my house with four cops and these four cops were drug squad. And for anybody that lives in British Columbia and remembers the UN gang when they fought the Scorpions and we had about 25 kids kill each other in this city, I was caught in the middle of that, not because I'm a gang member, but because I was sitting on top of a lot of cannabis as a medical grower. 
Once again, medical patients being caught in the crossfire of prohibition. It's got to stop. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, I'm recording. Got the top one up top, yep. and the second one here again. Yeah, I'm gonna film it. There's four of them. Let me talk to yep, them here. There's five of them. Yeah, I'll find out who their supervisor is. You guys got a supervisor that wants to do the talking? Wilcox. Mr. Wilcox. Um, these gentlemen coming up here are the inspection team. Yes. And they would like to do the inspection, but before they do that, they ask us to come in and make sure everything is safe for them. There's nobody hiding in closets or anything like that. Exactly, and I believe so, that I believe that this case has been settled in Ontario that yeah. the police can no longer come in yeah. for home inspections. No. Oh, we can to come in and assist them if you allow us to. Uh, I'm not allowed. That's no, what I'm saying. That's when fine. it comes to when it comes to allowing yeah, um, permission. Wait, wait, wait. Come and talk to the I mean, I don't have a problem standing here with you, or if you guys want to stand even right here, I mean, at the doorway, I mean, I've been, I've contacted legal counsel, that's yes, why. Yes, we have. Um, yep. It's nothing against you guys personally, legal counsel said if they show up there with three cop cars, then no, don't, you don't have to let them through your door. Oh, no. like so we can you. phone help Canada, too. Yeah, like no. um, anyway, Dwayne, do you want to explain what you're doing? So uh, yesterday was? you were you were okay with two officers coming in the house? One. Um, no, I, I listened to two, but I see six. No, and, uh, four. It was it's only four of us. Four, but right, I see, right. sorry, I'm looking at three cop cars as well. What bothered me is the gentleman I spoke to, I think, was it you that was standing there yesterday? Yeah. Okay, yes, it was yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I did say, you know, I'm feeling bad because, you know, I don't want to seem like the bad guy here, but at the same time, you guys are showing up in force. My neighbors right now, God knows what they think, you know, and I have nothing to hide. You know, when they went all said and done, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, we can all get along. But, you know, this has been, how many times have you guys been to my house and in my basement? Well, this, this is the first time I'm in the public And what is your here. reason for needing to come in the house for safety, aside from needing Just to protect them? Just making sure everything is to code. You, but that, you're police officers. No, yeah. no, no. This is a violent law enforcement. Okay, so you're coming in to do that. I'm saying, why do you need if him? If they're part of our team, they come for our safety. We only come in for their safety. No, so, safety. again, against my request to not have them come in for your safety, you're going to go ahead and, and tell me that I have to allow these officers into my house without a warrant? Because it I'm, amounts I'm, to a warrant I'm not going to tell you anything. I mean, it amounts to a warrantless search. That's what it does. Yes. I and mean, you're asking me to let officers into the house that are then going to want to do a plant count and everything else yeah. for no reason. No. Okay. Unless we can agree that there's going to be some sort of, uh, well, one, not six or seven of these coming in, but rather that your team. Th this is the process. One of us would stay out here with you and every, all fine. the other occupants. Three of us would go through the house, make oh. sure there's nobody hiding or uh, any weapons. Yeah, no, no. And you don't search for well, weapons. You guys can get a warrant if you want to search yes, for get weapons. A warrant. So let me finish. Let me finish. No, you we won't would... be searching my house. No. Okay, I'm just let me finish explaining the process. Three of us go through. We make sure there's nobody hiding in here. We come out, then the inspection team goes in while we stay outside. There ain't nobody hiding in here. There ain't no. nothing for you to really have any probable cause to believe yes. that. I didn't right. say we did. Well, we're coming here to assist them, and they don't. They want us. And I'm to do saying it. that so my understanding is that there's a legal case that you guys that's are not fine. allowed in. So I'm saying that no. if they would like to come in, and if they would like to go down and do their jobs, they're welcome to. I'll stand at yeah. the door with you, so you know you're safe and that they're safe because I'm with you. Well, I, we don't know that. And we don't have to worry. Else no, knows. bring that's me down. They, that's why they ask us. Has to there come. been any threat to you guys? And you guys have been to my house five times. Yeah. There's never been a threat to your officers. No. So what we'll do is we'll just get an entry warrant. Yes. Okay. I mean, it could. It could just be so much easier just to let things roll away so we're not here to, to stop you from what you want to do and just to make sure the electrical and everything's to go in. I just don't understand why all the officers this is, of, this is part of our team, Jason, okay? It's not, it's nothing to do with you. This okay, is do I going to get this every places. year, guys? Well, I mean, I don't mind, once this is done, am I going to get this crap every year? Yeah. Pro probably not, but this is the first time our, our section's been involved. We oh, have there we go. But has there been the public safety team? Okay? Public safety team. Yeah. 
Right. Okay, so Different this, city's called, it's about to call the same searching city. for my house. We're you're telling me you're going to get, no, you just told me you want to yeah. search for people in my home. Yes. And well, that's my get, problem that I have. I don't want you going through we're, my we're, closets. Really, okay, we'll just, we'll just get the entry warrant. We'll do things the, the, the proper way. That's the way you prefer. No, I'm asking you why it is that your team can't just go in, why you need to get a warrant. It's city policy. We, we don't need to get a warrant. You're just, you're not allowing the pol us to, 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 to follow city Because he wants policy. to search, that he wants to search my house. That's what he just said to me. Hmm? Yesterday I told you I'd take two officers and walk down there, but he's saying he wants to search every house in my room. It's like, to get downstairs, we walk straight down. What the hell is the side bedrooms or anything? Yeah, exactly. The police have ways they follow, they, they do things too, so it's... You know, obviously you, you can't accept the way we want to do things, we'll just... Well, we got it all on camera, so come on in. Let's go. Bring your guys in. Let's let's tell you guys doing what you're doing. We'll just see what uh, what my lawyers have to say after that. It'll be a lot easier. Well, we'll we come in, but you guys stay outside. No. No, you guys you guys aren't going to search my No that's fucking way. So that's how we do it. If you don't want that, that's fine. No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Thanks so, for your time, Jason. Thank, thank you. Jason. I'll show that to my lawyer. Thanks, guys. The Canadian government's getting out of the marijuana business. Canada's health minister announced changes to medicinal marijuana access. They're aimed at reducing crime, but many people think it will do the exact opposite. He's one of 26,000 Canadians with a license to grow medical marijuana, starting to feel anxious again since the Canadian government announced the system's about to change. Soon there will be no more medical marijuana produced and distributed by the government, and no more growing regulated marijuana from home. Jason Wilcox has been organizing the coalition against the repeal of the medical marijuana access regulations, particularly the personal production licenses and designated production licenses. I believe in patient options. You should be able to go and have somebody grow it for you if they have a place in the room and the ability, or order it from a pharmacy or a big business, whatever you want to call it, however the program is modeled. You should also have the right fundamentally, especially if it's to put in your own body, just like when you smoke it, you should have the right to grow it. Health Canada will, if successful, only license large-scale commercial operators who produce our medicine at up to four times the current cost. The government is simply hijacking and cornering the market, my friends. The issue is getting up to 26,222 legal growers, trying to get as many of them as possible to understand and unite and get on this file so that we can actually be prepared. So when Health Canada chooses to make their move, we're all prepared to take it on, take it on. A federal judge has approved an injunction allowing current licensed medical marijuana users to continue growing their own pot past April 1st. A court in British Columbia ruled users can continue growing their own pot for now. This decision comes less than two weeks before new laws for medical pot take effect in Canada. This is huge news. You know, and then so many patients right now, they're not suffering tonight. Tonight they're going to get to sleep. It's very hard for me not to get angry and frustrated as I think about the 500 plus impact statements of, right, of people paranoid and not just paranoid, God-given fear of going back on the pharmaceuticals because of what the government's doing now to medical patients. It's unconstitutional, it's not Canadian, it's unethical, and it's not right. My doctor, he wouldn't take my MRIs, he wouldn't send my MMRR form. And through other things, like I was really, really having a tough time, but it seems that that one major stressor, um, removing that, that threat of losing my guard and by the government, even having the threat of armed guards coming into my home to, to make sure that it's that it shut down really, really hurt me and, and, and hindered my healing. And that was the beginning. I'm aware of people who buy, who don't have a, a medicinal license, who buy their marijuana from medicinal growers. I would use the analogy though too, that we look at how many drunk drivers and people on pills right now are going out driving drunk and killing people. We police the drunk drivers, we don't throw all the cars off the road. And that's what they were trying to do with the patients and I'm glad that justice stepped in and interfered and allowed the Constitution to have a chance to put the MMPR under constitutional scrutiny. Right. 
I just really hope that we all get what I think we deserve, which is freedom. And that's what this is all about. The core mission of what's going on, these are people that are willing to stand up to the government with their endless amounts of money in pockets. And you know, do what we can, hit the streets, hit the roads, canvas, talk to people, you know, just go out there and promote to one person at a time, change perception and views by, you know what I mean, articulating truth. And you know, I, I'm proud to be a part of that movement. Now we're at $180,000 raised. What are we looking at over and above the quarter million that, that we originally set out? I'd have to estimate high. I'd have to say, look, let's shoot for a million bucks because who knows? You've seen the attitude of the federal government. Um, they recently are putting ads on, uh, paid for by the taxpayers about the dangers of cannabis. It's just another herb. Then it's going to be a lot going on and in the next year. It's our one big historical chance. Either we make it happen or we don't. It doesn't matter who you are or what you are. If you have a, uh, a belief in ensuring that people's rights should be taken care of, you should be donating. It's uh, it's for the people. You know, it's we the people who want this, and uh, you know, it's coming. People needed access to these products because it helped prolong and, and help you know, save a lot of suffering. This is going to end. We're past the point of whether we will or will not win our gardens. We will. So yeah, you licensed producers, you better be worried. I'm not going anywhere. This is far from over. I'm pretty confident that you're going to win. I, I, I mean, you can't guarantee it, but I feel like that's going to be a preserved thing, the, the right to grow your own cannabis for medical purposes, as it should be. I think that we got a super strong case. I'm really looking forward to what John can do in the court, and I hope it's heard fairly and with an open mind. I hope we legalize, but again, I hope we legalize with gardens so that there isn't this fight that I worry about between the underground, these growers that exist, and I know them. You know, the BC economy is almost run by these growers, you know. If that starts a gas war, then security's gonna go up because the gangs get involved, or real organized crime gets involved. I say, why well, doesn't the top down first recognize it as medicine, take it out of the CDSA, classify it as a safe and harmless herb it is, and call it, put it into herbology, or put it back into pharmacopoeia and let the doctors prescribe it the way it should be, and look after the damn patients. At the end of the day, it's about the patients. transitions two transitions anyway I want to put this farmers market on here guys for a quick second then I will be back farmers market got raided shortly after lift and we need to cover all sides of the story our frontline soldiers need to be there and for you cheerleaders that aren't out there now protesting get out and protest We'll see you in a couple minutes. All right, welcome back to Camp Scare. We're now outside Lyft, where we have really our strongest uh, BC activists that are still holding, holding down the fort with farmer's markets, which is what a free and fair market would look like. And, uh, and, and this is their own way of protesting, but also having a market. But they're not protesting, uh, my understanding is you're not protesting Lyft. I don't want to speak for you. Uh, we're, we're not protesting Lyft. Uh, we support what Lyft is doing. We support what people are doing. We're just, we know we're at a complex time in a cannabis issue as we are. Corporatization is coming in, and it's the way it's, things are going to be. So we're just trying to get ready for that, Jason. That's all. We're just really trying to make people more aware of some of the pitfalls of legalization. There'll still be prison for pot. We don't like prison for pot. I'm with you on that. We don't want that to happen. Where there's still going to be the stigmas. You know, people want to still try to make people hide in their basements. It looks like to smoke. So we have issues with lounges still finding places for that. With those C45, they haven't made those allowances. So the battles are still to come. And you know about battling. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, in fact, John Conroy is addressing Bill C-45 yes. and why recreational users can't grow there, yeah. etc. But this to me is what matters because we, we had hashtag free and fair before we put the coalition to rest. Yeah. Um, and the only reason we did was just because we have to now look at what comes next. So it's the government's move, which was the Canada's back to Canada. Yeah. So we've seen you guys out here like this. What I like is 
no police yeah. are even attempting to say don't do this because they know what's going on inside there. Yeah. So the same thing is going on in they there. They support, you know, they know that cannabis is helping to make their jobs easier because there's less people in, you know, in hard drug addiction situations where they're more out of control. Cannabis smokers really relaxed. We, we're chill. We're chill. Yeah. We're chill. Oh, have it. some chill. And as you can see, uh, we'll get B-roll of the people walking by, but there are hundreds of people walking by and there are hundreds of people smoking, but this is BC Life. I often talk about it in my shows, like we just, this is BC Life. I want to talk a bit about this plant. I came here this morning, it was cold as shit, and I'm amazed. I thought it was fake at first, and then I'm like, okay, it's older, it's got some purpling, but I thought it would be wilted by now. It is cold out I'm here. I'm trying to protect the roots the best I can here. I'm, yeah, it's a I'm, protest I'm plant. And it's had a hard life. I was, was going to say, I've got my, own, I've got my new mascot uh -huh. on my show, and it's, I don't know why it's growing really small, but yeah. this is a girthy plant to stand out in this temperature all yeah. day. It's actually super crush, so it's got, it must be super. So if anybody is in Vancouver and you're looking at where to go and come down and get involved with either this crew, uh, set up your own tent, do your own thing, get involved with, with the movement, and whatever, the, whatever your part is in the industry and in the movement, get involved but do more than allow the federal government to continue to pass policy that makes us stand outside and have to sell cannabis versus run our own mom and pop stores. We should be able to open a store. If brothers and I, if my brother and I wanted to open a store, we should be able to go open a Absolutely. store and sell it without Absolutely. having, and pay a, a reasonable, yeah. a reasonable policy fee. If we're gonna sell edibles, food safe, that's it. It does not need to be controlled by a monopoly policy that monopolizes Canada. Yeah, let the people in on the medicine. Just let the mom and pop, the, the craft free. cannabis growers, let the small people have a piece of legalization because they need the money. Yes. And the economy is not that's great good, right now. That's a good smoke. I don't know who yeah. that is. I got to give a shout out to them. Well, thank you, Jason, for uh, giving us a chance to speak, and uh, hopefully more people are going to be aware of it. So. They will. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get to be well. We're not going to cover too many, too much, uh, too much people here. We, we definitely wanted to get you on here and uh, make sure we know what's going on. Now, you guys set up every Sunday, if I'm correct, I our gallery. I've seen it. Actually, we set up pretty much week. almost every day now. It was yes. one day of the month, and then it was two days of the month, and then it was, like then it was every Saturday, my daughter, Saturday. My daughter and I walked by yeah. one day, and we like fucking were walking down. And I'm like, I just finished doing this joint where I'm smoking a joint and getting a hot dog. Yeah. I walk down, and here's four tables, and I'm seeing like pounds of weed. Just like, no. <laughs> I'm just like, this yeah. is fucking awesome. And you tourists know? are seeing it. Yeah. People from all around the world were exposing them to cannabis culture, like right here. They see cannabis yes. culture, <laughs> and they take that back to Germany, Brazil, Australia. It's like a going back it to is. the country of activism where they they get the idea they might be able to do this in Germany, you know, and, and then all, the laws come all down. are on us, so you're doing yeah. it at the right time. Again, I always say on my show, hats off to our frontline people, because it is risky to do this. Yeah. It is, oh, it yeah, is risky. Oh, yeah, friends get arrested, you know, but... It, it, to, to, do you have to break laws in order to change laws? We know yeah, this. Unjust laws. Unjust laws are meant they to be broken. They're meant to be broken. It's our civil duty. Yeah. Actually, if you look at a patriotism, yeah. and uh, I often talk about this because constitutionally speaking, it is our duty to oppose a law and that's why the coalition really fought free and fair keeping these plants keeping the genetics even now with the government however this plays out the people as you can see are going to push back against any sort of forced uh, pricing scheme fed, put, brought on by the yep. federal government. The federal government and the provincial government needs to stand down and kind of allow the market to dictate itself. On that if, they, note, if they don't, they're, they're not going to sell it cheap enough to wipe out that black market. It'll persist. So, exactly. Right. On that note, brother, thank you yep. and for all for you guys are doing out here. All Appreciate right? it. And uh, stay tuned for more from Canvas in Canada. We will get some B-roll here for more of the uh, more of the market because it goes all the way down the block here. Some people don't want to be on film, so we certainly don't want to film them if they don't want to be on there. But uh, we want to get their message out because if we do not recognize who's taking the real risk, we forgot how we got here. See, I've been doing this 20 years to get here. So don't forget how we got here, my friends. Yes. On that note, stay tuned for more lift coverage and out front coverage from Canvas to Canada. Cheers. Another good transition. Ha ha! There it is, guys. That's Ron from the uh, farmers market. Um, again, the BC farmers market. You don't see this anywhere else in the world, and except in downtown Vancouver, where people stand out there. And, and uh, when they were raided, um, it, it, it's funny when my daughter and I walked by there. We had said that I said to her, you know, since I was a youngster, I knew how police stings and operation worked. 
And I said, there's an officer sitting around here with the directional microphone, and somewhere up in those one of these condos, they're filming this shit, and they're collecting data and charges. And then eventually they'll move in and they'll raid them so they know that they can lock them up. They can shut them up and they won't make bail and be back on the street the next day selling. That's how they work. That's how they operate. Now my problem is, and I'm going to pull up the article. Y'all heard about the fucking cops. <laughs> cops. You raid a dispensary. You dumbasses go and eat some fucking edibles because you're fucking curious cops. Retards. Grade 12 motherfuckers. Uh, normally I like cops, but you know, when you're the hypocrites that are sitting on the boards trying to sell us weed, you're raiding our dispensaries, eating our shit. Then you go to the hospital, oh my God, I'm high, I'm high, I can't work today. Oh, really? But today you're feeling all good about yourself, aren't you? <laughs> today you're feeling real good about yourself. You ain't fucking dying, fool. You just about lost your job. I hope they fire your ass. I hope that Ontarians don't, don't stand for this. Torontorians don't stand oh, for this. They will. That they stand up and say, fuck you. We're not going to allow this. Why do cops get to raid a dispensary illegally, eat, a, eat, eat an edible, admit to it? That's a crime. <laughs> so you admit to it. You go to the hospital. And you, and you just, you just get a, a toxicology report. Then you just get dismissed. Then you get released, you get released from the hospital. Well, where's the charges? What, are, are police exempt from the law? When did that happen? <laughs> I need to know because I'm curious. I find it funny on one hand, but serious on the other because some of my brothers and sisters are facing charges right now for the exact same thing. Not funny. But yeah, you coppers, you did it while on the job, under oath, sworn to, to do no harm, sworn to uphold the law, and you broke it. And nobody's holding you to account. Police state. Ranting and raving a little bit this morning. It's not funny though, because if somebody needed emergency services, those two tards couldn't help them, and the emergency services department were taking care of them when they, when they should have been taking care of somebody that really needed their fucking help. And that's a good point. Again, that's it's great. Right? Fucking Drake on the is fucking extensive. Um, again, that that ends back to police resources. We talk about them wasting it on cannabis. Period. Um, here's an example where two cops, again, who should be charged for eating an edible, it was in their blood, they're busted, they shouldn't be allowed to drive a cop car again, it should be impounded, they should have their license taken away, but no, 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 they just get a suspension, they get to come back in a couple weeks. They're the cannabis pothead cops, that's okay. <laughs> I'd love to have you guys on my show. But, in all seriousness, you got to go. You need to get out of there, you broke your, you broke your oath. You, you, you made an oath to uphold the law. You didn't uphold the law. You raided a bunch of innocent people. Then you ate their shit. <laughs> you got yourself so high that you panicked, that you, re you reported yourself to your own supervisor, that you went to the hospital to get toxicology, only to find out that, guess what? It's called cannabis, fools. <laughs> and you're a recreational user. Now, in all seriousness, what you also did, Mr. Officers, is you pulled resources one, you pulled two officers off the street. Two, you pulled up two hospital beds. The doctors and nurses that needed to take care of them over cannabis. Somebody could have been dying and needed so, the services for the hospital were being used by these police officers. So again, when we want to look at the funny side of it, yeah, it's funny the officers fucking ate this shit, ha ha ha. But let's look at the serious side. Why aren't they charged immediately? Why is it that they get an excuse and pass and a suspension? <laughs> I, I, I just would like to know this. And then, they put the public at danger. They got guns, and they're using drugs. I would remind you, you know what? This is what's good, because when you take a gun course, you learn these things. You cannot be high on a drug and have a gun. It's against the law. So there's a second charge for those cops. They were high with a gun. Oh my God, you're right. That's a second charge, officers. Man, I ain't, even a, I ain't even a lawyer. I'm a paralegal, but I ain't no fucking lawyer. I can assure you that there are lawyers I hope tear you a new asshole. But the Toronto, the, the Toronto Police Force, Mr. Metro, since I was a kid, you've been protected. My <laughs> Fresh West had it right. Mr. Mr. Metro's always been down for the clown. Anyway, that's my fucking morning rant on that. Then they raid our farmer's markets here, which I, I predicted that was coming. But... We cannot excuse 
ever. The actions of police being high, driving their car with their little bells and wings also in their fucking woo, 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 woo. Most importantly, they had loaded fucking guns. And they were high to the point that they had to go to the hospital. High, fucked up, psychotic with guns. Charge them, put them in jail like you would to me. If I had a gun and I was high and I was driving, I'd go to jail. At the very least, I'd lose my motherfucking license. Take their fucking license. Torontoian, speak up. File a report with the police. Why the fuck are we just allowing this? There's a motherfucking rant. Why are we allowing it? Haha, ha, it's funny. The cops ate our brownies. Yeah, well, the cops also carried guns when they were high. The rest of us in this country that have to conform to gun laws and want to go to the gun range, we can't get fucking high. So when do we uphold the law? For the poor people? Is that it? That's a police state. We're living in a motherfucking police state. Law applies to all. We're all equal before and under the law, motherfuckers. I hope you stand up and I hope the police chiefs are listening. Write your letters. Do what you need to do as Torontonians. Do your fucking jobs and point out these cops were high with guns. Forget them being high and it's funny. Ha, ha, ha. I get that. A lot of people just dismiss that. Stupid officers were legalizing anyway. Fuck that. They had a gun. What if they went into psychosis like everybody says? What if reefer madness was real? <laughs> And they went out and started shooting everybody. Boom, 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 boom. Then what would happen, huh? Let's think about this. Remember, boom, 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 you're going to kill your wife if you fucking use cannabis. Those cops need to be held to account. Not to mention, they swore an oath to follow the law. Not to get high, carry their guns, and drive the car fucking high. Fuck you, officers of Toronto. Hold each other to account. Where's your integral value? I'm a patriot to Canada, but motherfuckers, you were driving high. You were high with a gun, not me. You want to persecute my brothers and sisters? Persecute your own, motherfuckers. Here, here. I need to get to commercial because fucking this isn't doing my show any service. Going, you're right. Those motherfuckers should be charged. It shouldn't end there. It shouldn't, they shouldn't be on suspension. This isn't a fucking joke. You're right. They took a fucking duty to fucking serve and protect the fucking community. They are, they're paid for by the motherfucking tax, by the, my, my, my dad's fucking tax dollars, man. My sister's tax dollars. You guys can hear Vicky, oh, through, you guys can hear Vicky through my mic. And she's right, maybe we shouldn't cut this. Maybe we should just fucking rant a little bit for the end of the show. And to my sponsors, you like my rants, you fucking get it. But you know what? These are cops. Right. Now here's my problem. Here's my biggest problem. Some of my friends, they have gun licenses and they fucking take this shit serious. They will, if you, if you even break out a fucking joint with these guys, they will straight box you in your head. Because you can't be high around a fucking firearm. No, man. So if you guys think I'm taking this lightly or overblowing this, I am not. If the shoe was on the other foot and Jason Wilcox was caught driving a car with a fucking gun and weed, and I said, oh, I, I'm high, take my fucking blood, my God, there's a guilty plea, throw him in fucking jail. Right. But no, you don't persecute your own motherfuckers. You do Project Claudia, throw all my brothers and sisters in jail, and then you don't do fucking nothing else. Fuck you, Toronto. Fuck you, Mr. Metro. Police your own. Police your own. Those, both those officers, suspension is not enough. You can't just suspend them and give them a fucking desk job. One, I would lose my license. My car would be in the pound. I would be in jail. I would not be allowed to have a gun license because I was high with my weapon. Not to mention I was in a public place. Furthermore, you broke the most solemn oath, uh, like a doctor's oath to do no harm to a patient. You made an oath to follow the fucking law. Not drive high, not drive with a gun while high, and not report yourself to your supervisor that you're fucking high with a gun. No, you made the same mistake. You know what I hear from officers when I was younger? You made this mistake, son. Take your medicine. Oh, fuck you, officer. Take your medicine. You already did. You got high. You got scared. But you know what? You had a loaded fucking gun. A loaded fucking gun. And those of us who lived in Toronto know and understand Mr. Metro. They like to fucking play with those guns a lot. So a cop on cannabis, all fucked up to the point that they need to go to the hospital and report on themselves, rat themselves out, then charge them, put them in jail, take their license away, and treat them like you would any other fucking civilian. 
There's my motherfucking sermon for the morning. Thank you. Because if you and I did that on the job, if we did any of the above on our on our job, you'd be fired, you'd be charged, you know, and said would ABC. Anybody would be fired or charged. That's right. Why the fuck are these cops sitting on suspension with pay? They they should be suspended license. Yes, they should. Immediately. They shouldn't even be driving. No, they should have But yeah, you wanna fucking do that to me and my family. Take my fucking license away, because I fart cannabinoids, only I'm not high. Those motherfuckers are so high, they have to go to the hospital. Armed with guns. And you suspend them. While you throw my brothers and sisters in a fucking cell and give them a rubber sandwich in the morning and a cold coffee, and me, over the years. So fuck you. Treat your own like you would treat us. We're all equal before and under the law. Check section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. You fucking immature motherfucker, grade 12 retards. Enough is enough from Toronto Police. From Project Claudia to this. I believe the lot during even during Project Claudia, even even Project Claudia fucking raids. Think about it, guys. Even Project Claudia raids, the cops were caught eating fucking shit. Nobody done anything. In America, we caught them eating shit too. They raid the fucking place. We see them eating and laughing and joking about it. Ha <laughs> ha! How many of them are walking around with loaded guns? Look this shit up. Google this shit. I don't give a fuck how crazy I sound because you know what? I do care about guns. I care about the right to be able to bear arms. But do it safely. I don't get fucking high, drive down the street with a loaded fucking gun. And sure as fuck, I never even took an oath not to. Now, if you can't hold your officers to account, fuck, I'm glad it wasn't a Vancouver cop because God knows I'd be all over that shit. Torontoians, do your job. Go after these two. Don't let them make a mockery of our culture. Don't let them throw us in jail while they allow their own to fucking get high fuck or run around with guns and fucking drive fucking high and not be held to account. <clears throat> fuck am I mad. I got to go to commercial break. Here's coalition past the present. We'll see you guys when we get back. Throw in your comments, your chats, any posts. I'm going to pull up the fucking news articles about these two clowns and you guys decide should these cops be carrying guns, driving high and it wasn't just oh, about, no. it wasn't just about eating a fucking goddamn brownie or a cookie or a fucking lollipop. It was about driving high and having a gun. The gun laws say you can't be high and have a gun. There's two laws broken and these officers are on suspension and they can still drive home to their wives. For fuck's sakes.
oh shit, you can't see me. Now you can see me. My intro was playing over and over. I apologize. I have nobody watching my fucking film. I need to. I need to pay attention to these slides better. Um, it's extremely difficult to monitor these slides and do this at the same time. But I apologize for that. Uh, sorry. Don't worry about it. It's shit. Anyway, um, I apologize, guys, for the link uh, uh, transition there. There's the uh, co-host. But then we also talked about the uh, resin seeds. So here's the LA um, LA Ultra from resin seeds that we've brought up. And uh, there's five of them that have come up. The fourth one's just not above the cup yet. And you can see they're just kind of hanging over here. Your basic seeds. But these are from resin seeds, they're from Spain. They were mailed over to us. And uh, we look forward to, we're gonna be staking them up. And, uh, and again, this is, this, the, these are ones that are operating before they head out to the warehouse, just under the very basic of light. So it's, um, it's certainly not the, the full thing. And I need to get myself off of here, anyway, um, charging. Um, shit, there was one other thing I was gonna do. Oh, it was because of those officers. I was getting too over, over, rah, rah, rah. And my friends, please subscribe to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button so that you know when we go live. Um, that I way- I still wanna know what's gonna happen to that plant. One, the mascot. Like we don't know. This is this is going to keep going all year or next into next year. This will keep going until it's large enough that I feel it's worth flowering. Because right now it's just not worth flowering. No. <laughs> I think it makes it more interesting. So this lasts a whole year. It's going to be the most retarded, as weirdest growing plant. It almost looks like male parts showing up here. So That's what I thought. it almost looks like it might be a male. Me and Gwen were saying that the other night. So it might be a male. We shall see. And you show, I mean, again, if I break out my microscope, I can tell you 100%. Even the males will show some hairs. Have you sent me that article? Yes, you have. Now I've got the article, and I can actually bring this into broadcaster for you guys to see. So even though I'm going to keep myself calmer, I apologize to anybody that don't like rants, but I will rant when you see this sort of stuff, because it is no joke. Two Toronto police officers accused of stealing marijuana, getting stoned on the job. Now, the reason this bothers me once again is I want you to remember, you see what's on their waist here? These are guns. Not to mention the array of weapons that they have. But the fact that they're armed, high, and driving a two-ton, three-ton, five-ton vehicle, whatever the fuck it was they were driving, they were driving high with guns and well under a sworn oath to uphold the law. So why are these officers not charged? Let's just see here. Two Toronto police officers have been suspended after allegedly consuming marijuana seized during a dispensary raid. Now it's allegedly. So are they pleading not guilty? Or have they been charged? How can it be allegedly when you go to the hospital and you say, I ate fucking marijuana and I'm fucking too high to do my job? How is that allegedly? I love how the police protect themselves and the papers help them. Satire. The Toronto Police Service spokesman confirmed that two officers from the Midtown 13 Division are being investigated by the force's professional standards unit, but wouldn't reveal further details. So first it's alleged, then it's they can't release details because the professional standards division is into it. Anyway, you can see all that shit right here. So there is no allegations. These two officers were stoned as fuck and had their guns. However... A police source told Global, Global News that the officers helped themselves to some of the bounty from a dispensary raid carried out over the weekend. It's not known whether the pair were involved in the raid. So what, their buddies gave them the weed? More buddies than maybe, maybe, maybe the whole metropolitan office needs to be cleaned out. Anyway, what, again, a few days ago? You don't get high a few days ago and then it affects you three days later. So officers, why'd you get high on the job with your guns and driving? Because now it's not just the raid, because the raid was two days prior. So I have concerns with the fact that you chose to get high on the job with your partner, with your guns, while driving a car. You need to be fired and held to account. I'm a fucking patriot to this country. You could have killed a kid. You could have drove over somebody. You don't run to the hospital and cry wolf. Oh, I ate a cannabis cookie because I did this. You broke the motherfucking law. Fuck. Stay calm, Jason.
Okay, the officers may have been bitten. The officers may have bitten off more than they can chew. However, one of them reportedly felt like he was going to pass out and was taken to Sunnybrook Hospital. While the other said to be cautious but nauseous. <laughs> the police call revealed. So again, guys, I go back to the start of this article where the police try to protect their own and they really do a good job trying to protect their own, but right here we go a little bit further and what does it say? They went to Sunnybrook Hospital. They admitted to using cannabis. One said he felt like he was gonna pass out. And again, I go back to the guns and driving the car. What if they pass out while driving the car and drove in and killed somebody? My poor wee dad throwing out your cookies. I know, uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying, hold on, hold on. No, I'm just, let me stay focused here. Because driving a car high, Again, driving a car high. Listen to what I'm saying here. I'm trying not to get distracted. Driving a fucking car high, period, is what this big driving cabuckle is about. My bigger issue is driving high with guns. And then this officer, by his own admission, saying, I was cautious but nauseous. <laughs> the other one is saying, oh my God, I thought I was going to pass out. Now that scares me because if he was going to pass out, what else were they thinking? Because this is only what they admitted to. So anybody who thinks that this was maybe the officers or allegedly the officers, there's no allegedly, they just admitted it. There's no allegedly. An officer is also understood to have taken a fall after slipping on the ice. So too stone, too stone to even walk on the ice. So he slipped and he fell. One more reason he shouldn't be operating a fucking vehicle. My God, this is almost comical, but not. You know, you tell me that I'm a danger to the fucking streets. You want to arrest me, throw me in cuffs, and lock me up while you motherfuckers chose to come to work at two days after the raid, which means you stole police evidence, kept it for yourselves because you're cool little officers, <laughs> chose to get high, cool, drive your gun or drive your vehicle, and load your guns. Not to mention you swore an oath to uphold the law in which you broke three. That's three laws that I know of that you broke. Forget the ethics committee. <laughs> you broke the motherfucking law. You go to jail. Fuck. Global News has learned that one of the officers under investigation is Constable uh, Video, I can't pronounce the name, Domenio, in, in a case of possible self-fulfilling prophecy. D'Amelio previously tweeted a selfie video of himself <laughs> set to tune on rapper Afro Man's 2001 stoner anthem because I got high, because I got high. I gotta fucking put myself back on the screen here. I know, people think I'm fucking joking here. But this is like, this is the real. Uh, I'm not gonna keep going here because this is just killing me, but it, so this officer is like, first, first they start the article off by, of course, most people only read the top of the article and then they just dismiss it. Oh, it's alleged. We don't know if the officer's did it yet. Read a little further down, the officer said, but I was going to pass out and I was cautiously uh, nauseous. But we ate, we ate shit. You know what? It ain't fucking funny. <laughs> it's funny as shit that you're, you're stupid as shit because you got grade 12, but you broke three laws. You swore to uphold the law. You've jailed my brothers and sisters. You admitted to what you did. Toxicology proved it in your blood. But you still got to drive your car home to your fucking family. No, I agree. You know, Canadians. Okay. Canadians. Fucking Canadians. Wake up to this. The same people persecuting us are the ones trying to sell us cannabis and drive around with guns and drive fucking high. Let's persecute those officers. Let's show them what it's like to be persecuted. I think officers should have drug tests, all of them. On a regular, not, 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 don't let them know when the drug test is. Don't let them go in with the bag like the expert fucking uh, athletes do and piss in a fucking fake bag that your buddy pissed in the night before. We all know how to get by drug tests. Let's have some real drug tests in Mr. Metro in the Metropolitan Police Force. Let's put some real drug tests to it. Then we can clean out the fucking bullshit and get to the real. Hey, I work for a short time in private addictions. <laughs> Let me tell you. Oh, snap. <laughs> I was like, I 
door is locked. Weed is the least of their worries. <laughs> I, I am stoked about this only be, I, I, I when I say stoked, you see this, this this frustration comes up because again, I have a I have a person I know that's visiting here right now, part of the Project Claudia Raids. And the guy's out on bail. He doesn't know what his future holds. These two fucking cops standing here smirking, the guy's like playing Afghan. Ah, I'm gonna get high. Then goes to, goes to work. Ah, I'm gonna get high with my gun. And I'm gonna drive my car. Woo! And I might kill some people. Fire his ass. What do you fucking mean, ethics committee? The laws are on the books. Apply them. For fuck's sakes. For fuck's sakes. Don't let them drive. Fuck. Don't let them drive. Obviously, they don't give a fuck to eat candy and drive with guns and high to the point they have to go to the hospital. Might pass out. Passing out behind the wheel. Three-ton vehicle crashing into fucking crowds. Yeah, fucking wonderful, Mr. Metro. Metropolitan Police Force, come down on your own fucking people if you want us to respect you. Because now this is becoming a police versus the people thing, and that's not good. Police your own. If you're going to be our fucking protectors, then make sure that you eliminate your fucking bad apples. Fuck. Well, and there's a lot of good cops. There is. That's why I'm saying. Eliminate your bad apples. But do not back up your bad apples and say it's okay for them to get high. It's okay for them to carry guns while they're high. But every other Canadian will face persecution and five years in jail if you fucking have a gun and you're high or drunk. This ain't no fucking game. Those fucking cops, two days after a raid, not the day of, it doesn't fucking matter, chose to come to work, chose as partners to get high, drive their fucking vehicles, probably figured they could handle it, doesn't fucking matter. They broke the law. They put the public at risk. And most importantly, they were carrying guns while high. And for all you gun owners out there and you gun protectors and you know what I'm talking about, that is a fucking serious offense. More serious than anything else. The driving stuff, it's all questionable, debatable. But fucking guns and drugs. They were high with loaded guns and thank God they didn't fucking flip out and start tripping balls and start fucking shooting people. If we for madness was real. But instead the two dumbass 12 fucking Great 12 cops, whatever the fuck they are. I really don't give a shit. Track me down, motherfuckers. I don't care. You're a disgrace to your fucking force. You're a disgrace to this country. Lock up people. Put them in a fucking cell that stinks, knowing that they're going to have a cold fucking rubber sandwich and a coffee in the morning, while you get high and drive around the city thinking it's a fucking joke. And I know this happens every day. You got caught, bitch. Bitches. And both y'all need to be held to account. I wish this was a Vancouver cop. Only they aren't so fucking stupid. Man, I didn't expect to end the show this way. But you know what? That is wrong. And Mr. Metro, after Project Claudia, and you locked up thousands, the largest raids ever since the fucking brothels of Toronto, the largest raids ever after that, if you cannot deal with these police officers for breaking the law, carrying guns, being high, driving a car while high, then there's a fucking problem. This isn't an ethics issue. This is a law issue. Fuck. I can't seem to calm myself down on this issue. People find it funny. Ha, ha, ha. We've seen this in America. Cops are fucking high. So, yeah, cops are high. But, again... Cops are high with guns. I'll leave it at that for now. Uh, Patty, who also won from last week's giveaways, everybody's receiving their giveaways right now, and I'm seeing the pictures go up and getting the thank yous, and that's all awesome. I just want you guys to know, uh, Patty, for yourself, um, again, every, anybody that wins on the show has to send their emails to either jason at cannabis2canada.net or to cannabis2canada at gmail.com. And it's best gmail.com to be honest, to get a hold of me. And, um, and to be sure that I'm getting your message in the morning. And that way I, I'm able to deal with the winner. And most importantly, it's because when you sign up at our website, you sign up with an email address. We cross-reference email addresses, we cross-reference IP addresses, and we cross-reference names to make sure that we're giving the winner 
the proper prize. And Patty, you've done all the steps and we need to get it to you. The only thing you did wrong was send, uh, send your address to, to Facebook, which is okay. You may not have heard me or I may not have said it, who knows. But um, <clears throat> either way, your package will be sent out this week. And to our friends that are receiving it, fucking A. You know, I'm glad you guys are receiving it. Enjoy some of the postal man's fucking favoritism that he shows us. It's kind of cool. Um, you all have tracking numbers. You guys can track shit. You guys can follow it for yourselves. Yeah, dabber's up, definitely. You know what, I'm actually fucking, I'm actually sweating from fucking getting so mad. That, can, that goes to show you, you want real passion? You know what, I fucking, I've seen enough people go to jail, I've seen enough families separated over this fucking God-given nature-given plant, depending on whether you're a religious person or a, a, a naturalist. Doesn't matter. This was given to us not to be monopolized, corporate, corporate, corporatization, not to have any of this. It was to be given to the people. To fucking plant. And to see all the harm done by officers over the years who fucking knew. I smoke with some of them. They know. They know cannabis doesn't hurt. And now they sit on the boards of directors of the people that are selling us cannabis. Bill Blair, all oh, Torontorians, you remember Bill Blair. Oh, that's your fucking guy running around setting all this shit up. So a former police chief who has all the other police chiefs working with you, wonder how Project Claudia happened, who funded it, well, came from big business through him, through his connections, and so forth, is my theory, conjecture, speculation. But I say Project Claudia was funded by big business, and it was meant to shut down the old and usher in the new. I've been saying this for five motherfucking years on this show. So I'm getting tired of it coming to fruition. And seeing these cops, normally I don't even call them cops. I, I respect police normally. But the thought that my daughter could have been out on the street in Toronto, visiting her family, and these officers were driving around fucking high to the point that they might pass out, and the other one's cautiously nauseous, whatever the fuck that is, that's concerning. Most importantly, what if they had some sort of weird reaction? What if they had bad cannabis of some sort? Who fucking knows? They say all this bad stuff's out there. What ifs? That's why these laws are against myself and my brothers and sisters that use cannabis. So this is not an ethics commission issue. This is an immediate suspension. Take their fucking license and put them on trial issue. But police protect police. And the more you do this, the more you're separating yourself from the people. And that's unfortunate. It makes me sick. You know, Mr. Metro used to beat my ass when I was a kid because of the shit that I did. I know Mr. Metro well. I know 311 Jarvis well. I know Brookside Youth Center well. I know the East and the West well. And these motherfuckers driving around high with a gun, Google that shit. Google the laws in Canada around being fucking high with a gun. And ask me if I should not be this mad or you should not be this mad because your kids, your mother, your father, your aunt, your uncle could have been on that street and could have been hit by that fucking cop car because the guy passed out. The cop could have had a fucking freak out and fucking pulled the trigger because he got a little antsy, a little panicky. Oh, oh, oh. Boom. That's why you don't do drugs and use guns. Fuck. I gotta calm the fuck down. I've been on the air long enough now. It's two hour mark. I'm gonna be calling this show. My friends, well, before I close out here, let me just check these other feeds and I'm gonna close out. I gotta get off the air because this is just too fucking hard. It's too hard. Remember to like this shit. Like these pages and share this shit so people know this information because if we do not, Torontorians, you took Project Claudia up the ass. You took a lot of shit up the ass. This is your chance to fucking give it back to them. Like I gave it to the government in Allard. Give it to the fucking Metropolitan Police and hold them to account. These officers cannot drive a car high, report themselves, and carry guns. 
It breaches two different laws that they can be charged under and should be charged under. And they certainly should not be driving right now based on the cannabis driving laws. I don't give a fuck if they report it to the Prime Minister himself. We're all equal before and under the law. Check section 15 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I got to get the fuck off the air. I love all of you and my passion and my heart is for this plant. But please stop locking up our brothers and sisters. Please stop putting the innocent poor people in jail and allowing officers, political power figures, doctors, and fucking lawyers to make millions while they jail the end cannabis user. On that note, this is Jason Wilcox, uh, yeah, signing out, and um, yeah, you guys, you guys have a wonderful day. Again, you know, this is one of those times where, enjoy your day, understand, this isn't going to ruin my day. This is just more me thinking like, fuck, how many other cops are doing this? And I'm just so, uh, I think of how many people have been hurt. This is called a drug war for a reason. Now, if the drug war is over and the war on cannabis is over, why the fuck are you still persecuting us? And on that note, please, persecute these two officers in Toronto. I can't do it from BC. I have no voice. You can do it from Toronto. Torontorians, speak up, use your voice, and shut these officers down for driving high, most importantly, being high with a gun. Check into those laws and ask me why these officers should be on suspension versus being under fucking federal indictment. Not knowing this is Jason Wilcox signing out. Love y'all. Have a wonderful